We are still in the mood of Ide Kabir, and we want to wish our Muslim viewers happy celebration. Thank you for joining the midweek edition of Journalist Hangout. I'm Ayodili Uzubakun. Today on the program, Senate Minority Leader Senator Eyinaya Abaribe speaks with Journalist Hangout on salient national issues, especially the controversy during the passage of the Electoral Act Amendment Bill by the Senate. Babajide Koladi Ututoju engaged the Abia South Senator on these issues. Jidi, welcome on the program. And um, how was it like? I remember you told me when um, you had an appointment with Senator Abaribi that I told you to wait for the passage of this electoral act. And on Friday, Senate did succeed in passing this, but the House of Representatives did not pass that. They had to adjourn to that um, particular Friday. Yes, um, and. It was a good thing that we had to do it after the uh, passage of the bill um, in a rancorous and controversial manner. So it enabled us to ask questions relating to that. And um, the viewers will say there is a vintage uh, Barry Bay on display. So I'll just take you straight to that exclusive interview. It's one of journalists' delight and articulate politician. Hmm. Senate Minority Leader Senator Inaya Baribe live up to that billions when Babajide Kolade Ututoju engaged him in Abuja on issues of national significance from the controversy generated over the vexed issues of electronic transmission of election results and the Petroleum Industry Bill, PIB, to the rearrest of Nam Dekanu, the Abia South Senatorial, the Senator, dissected the issue with deeper perspective. Let's share the interview for your viewing pleasure. This is a special interview with Senator Eyinaya Abaribe from Abia State, former Deputy Governor of Abia State and leader of the Minority Caucus of the Nigerian Senate. Thank you for the opportunity to speak with you today. My pleasure. I would like us to start from the events at the Senate. Um, many Nigerians thought the Senate will pass the electoral bill stipulating electronic transmission of results. But that was not what happened at the end of the day. Can you um, explain to us why the Senate that you are part of decided to vote in that manner? Well, I, I, whatever I say will simply be speculation. But I, I think what happened, very simple, is that um, certain interests were being protected by those who felt that uh, electronic transmission of results and openness and transparency is not what they would like. And uh, I say this very uh, with all sense of um, responsibility. In order to explain what happened, we need to go back in time. There was a committee on INEC on both chambers, in the House and in the um, Senate. They met severally last year. They met with INEC, they met with all the agencies, they met with everybody that was involved. They had joint conferences, there was um, uh, public hearings, there was everything. The civil society groups, everyone came in. Then there was a draft. That draft had been ready since January. And that draft uh, stipulated that it was time and that there will be electronic transmission of results. And then there started to be delays from January 30th when they left. And with the delays going on, and we continue to ask, where is this bill? Why don't we bring it out? Because we don't want what happened in the eighth Senate to happen, where the president, you know, it was sent to him three times, he sent it back, and then at the end said, there wasn't enough time, and therefore he was withheld 
absent. And we said, no, let's do this quickly. It had dragged on to now in uh, June. About a couple of weeks ago, we started hearing rumors that what had been agreed by the committee, by the joint committee, uh, with INEC agreeing on electronic transmission that it was tampered with. And of course, when we asked, we were not told, no, it wasn't true, this and that. Then there was a leak, which I'm sure you also saw, of a, a new insertion, which is what they said that was 52-2, where it said, provided that there will be no transmission. That was the, what was seen. And everybody, there was an uproar. And we went back to the um, committee chairman. And then, they, of course, they uh, constituted a, uh, a meeting. And there was another joint session in which they now agreed on this 52, 1, 2, and 3. And 50, uh, 52, 3, which was a concession by everybody, now said that there would be transmission of results when and where practicable, which was kind of like a halfway house for everyone. And we thought that we had all agreed on it. And we all said, OK, so let's just take the halfway house. And we thought that coming to the floor, that what we will do will simply be just to pass, and then we can lay all these things to rest. But then, getting to the floor, we now saw an ambush. And I'm, I, I use the word ambush, because when a joint committee meets and does everything, and we are consulted, and everybody says, fine, the committee, we normally let what committee does to pass. But on the floor, uh, the senator from Niger State, Senator Sabi Abdullahi, now put up another motion on that 52-3 to say that the, uh, there should be transmission of results only when NCC and the National Assembly, in other words, introducing something else, uh, another umpire into the mix yes. and this was clearly against section 78 of the constitution and so we also rose and of course you could see that there was a hula ballo and we decided to go into a closed session in the closed session we also canvassed this view that we cannot pass a law that um, is it, it, going to be against the constitution the constitution is very clear any law we pass that is uh, uh, antithetical to the Constitution is null and void. So how could the same National Assembly, who have sworn on that Constitution, seeing the provision in the Constitution, Section 78, that only INEC is empowered to do anything about elections, now want to introduce NCC and National Assembly itself. In fact, bringing in National Assembly into the electoral uh, process, means that the National Assembly is no longer outside that we have stepped into the arena, which no court will agree with. And so when we canvassed that view, and it was not taken, and there was just this whole thing about, oh, where, uh, where we come from, uh, there is no network, this other. And I showed them, personally myself, and I said, I have a document from NCC that says that 90.8% of the country is covered. And that INEC has also said that what they're doing is not just for, uh, uh, you know, saying that there's no network. That you simply snap, and when you reach where there is network, that it simply sinks. Just like it happens with the WhatsApp. Yeah, just like it happens with WhatsApp or level with other provisions, what happens with your text messages and so forth. And so we felt that it was simply simply uh, done uh, than those who are doing it know where they want to do it. In other words, they don't want anything electronic. And uh, we also didn't want the situation that 
normally happens when we caucus. And then uh, we come back and we say, okay, we are withdrawn our distance. So we now insisted, no, let us all vote. Let Nigerians see what their representatives actually do. And uh, I'm just glad. Just like it happened during the third term. Precisely, just like it happened during the third term. So I'm glad that Nigerians have, could now locate those who were there, those who were not there, those who voted for transparency, and, and those who did not. So that you can now engage your representative and ask him, why did you take this step? Because at most times, we all fall under the rubric of eyes or nays. And then when the question comes, when you go back to your constituents, you tell your constituents, oh, no, I voted nay, but you see they overruled me and all that. So this time, nobody can hide. Now, uh, talking about that clause that Honorable Sabi Abdullah introduced, can you hazard a guess as to how the Senate could have performed that role? or how the Senate um, is envisioned to perform that role by the author of the clause on election day, for example. Uh, that's what I'm saying. It is a, a role that we cannot play. And he knows. I think all they just did Because you are involved with your own election, <laughs> election day, uh, and so, mobilizing so, so people how, to How are you going you? to do that? I think what just happened is simply looking for something to torpedo that agreement that had been reached at the committee level. In fact, I was joking with the chairman of the committee, uh, uh, Senator Gaia, and I said to Senator Gaia, why did you vote against even your own committee's recommendation? <laughs> and, uh, of course, he could say, oh no, that he had a better argument. So, how will you be better if somebody brings an argument that is anti the constitution and you say it's better how would you say it's better but anyway those are the things that happened did you at any point entertain any fear that what transpired at the senate could happen yes i did i knew i was ready i'm the minority leader and i my job is to anticipate things even I went a step further, I also had, assuming that uh, we had um, been uh, uh, prevented from doing that voice vote, I, I already also had a written motion on rescission. A motion on rescission is that when we have passed uh, something, you can bring, out, bring a motion and resolution to look at it again, but it has to be written. I already packaged those things and kept. Our job is to be ready at all times <laughs> to um, do the thing that is in the interest of the country. There were people who felt that this was, um, um, that voting was along um, the lines of North and South. Was that really what transpired? No, the voting was basically along the lines of party, except for a few people from my party that voted against the position uh, as canvassed by us. People still believe that we are not right for electronic voting. Some of the people that have spoken would say, see, the, the truth is, we are just not right for electronic voting. Where do you stand? Well, I think that those people are grossly um, misinformed, number one. Two, they are also being very mischievous. They are, we are very ripe for electronic voting because almost everything we are doing in the country now is electronic. We transfer money electronically. We take money from ATM electronically. Even those who speak with bandits, they're also speaking with them electronically because they're speaking with cell phones. They talk with them. They, they are, and all that you need is to have coverage. And there's coverage all over this country, never mind whatever they say. What happens is that when people want to um, do evil, they justify it in all manners of ways. Ask any of the people who voted against to show you 
their cell phones. You will see transfers that they are doing to all their constituents, to their descent, to their family, to everything. They do it. And what is electronic voting, really? It is not that you're going to do it electronically. It is that you're going to cast your vote. The vote will be counted and entered into a sheet. And all agents will sign. And once that is done, you snap that piece of paper. Once you snap it, then the physical one, which is that paper, is now being taken by the uh, returning officer to the next uh, collision point. Meanwhile, that thing that has been snapped will now sink to their server at Abuja. And it, it is now published to the outside world. So that by the time you get to collation, even though there will still be physical collation, this electronic one now serves as a backup, assuming that there's a problem. But you know what happens in elections? What happens in elections is very simple, which is what they want to do. Elections are held. Results are coming from each polling booth. As that paper is being taken to the collection center at the ward, sometimes they snatch it. Sometimes they change the results uh, uh, midway. And uh, what you now have as uh, 200 votes now turns to 2,000. What you now have as uh, 20 votes now turns to 120. You simply add it and add figures and all that. That's what normally happens. And that is all we want to eliminate. And it has been used in the election in Nasarawa State and the House of, House of Rep election. And that was the first pointer that things were going to go right. Then it was used in a Edo State. That was also the second pointer. Then it was used in Ondo State. That is also the, that, that's why you see that both in Edo and in Ondo, at the tribunal level, nobody was now contesting results and figures because they were all right by everybody. And the whole world acknowledged it. They were now contesting whether you were qualified or not qualified. So this was an improvement, which uh, INEC wanted. All that, uh, with all due respect, my colleagues who voted against when you just to pull back the hands of the clock. You know, when you talk in this manner, uh, one would be tempted to think that you are so confident that your party could win the next election. But the rate at which members of your party are jumping ship sends a clear signal that all is not well within the PDP and that the PDP is already behaving like someone who had considered defeat even before the contest is thrown open. No, I don't think so, Jude. I think you're very wrong. What is happening? Those who are jumping ship are being threatened and this, what has, what has just happened? Governors who have immunity are being threatened. You, yes, and I will tell you how. No, if well, they choose not to... Just, just a minute. Let, let me finish our train of thought so that you will understand what I mean by being threatened. They are being told, don't worry. We will write results. And when we write results, you will not make it. And therefore, weak-willed people weak-willed people think that that is what is going to happen and so it's better that they run in quickly so that they will write the result for them. the door is shut precisely that's exactly <laughs> what they've been told and uh, of course what has just happened has also told everybody and, and and i challenge the apc to say if you say that you have everything you have the government you have the population and all that what is your fear why won't you let uh a transparent process happen. And so when you say, oh, my party is uh, the consider, we're not considering anything. On the contrary, we are actually very, very elated. And I'll tell you why I say we're elated. It's now becoming obvious to every Nigerian where the problem really lies. 
it's now also becoming obvious to every Nigerian that all the promises made by APC and all that haven't fallen flat that the party is very jittery. It's, all, it's the jittery people that continue to say, let us hold everybody so that uh, whenever we rig elections, they say, ah, after all, we had 100, uh, uh, all, all governors are in our party. It's not true. But by the nature of our politics, yes. if you have those governors on your side, it makes it very likely that you will be able to win those states because of the power of incumbency. Precisely. And that is why we want for elections to be free, transparent, and credible. Win on what you have done for the people and what you promise to do for the people. Let your party and its records be the selling point that will make you win. But you know not, not, not by insisting that you no, know Senator, do Senator, you know that it's not in all cases that a governor who works for the people goes on to win an election. I can give you instances of governors that work for the people, yet they didn't get their politics right and they were defeated yeah, in the election. Yeah, so it's no guarantee. But you're saying two things. You have to get your politics right and then you have to work for the people. Those are two... two yes, if, you, if as a governor you defected yeah. from a party that is immensely popular in the state, in the yeah. state yeah. you move to another party, less popular, without the structures. For leaving the family, they could just vote against you and you may, you may not win the election. In other words, you didn't also get your politics right. If your party is popular, if the people are with you, where would you live? Where would you go to? That is the point. So whichever way we slice and dice it, it comes right back to the same thing. Let us have a transparent process devoid of manipulation in any way. And all that is going on now, all the fight that APC is doing so that there will be no <laughs> direct direct transmission is so that there will be well, have we ever <laughs> had, yeah. have we ever had an election that was not manipulated because people say that even in the east especially where you come from voting in the recent never takes place that results are usually written not true uh Jide, i can tell you that that is not true where i come from i come from i represent Aba, i represent abia south Voting has always been what the people want, no matter how you try to manipulate it. Voting has always been that way. And so that's why, why do you think that despite the fact that I have always been anti whatever establishment that we have, I win elections and come back? It's because the people are there and they stand with me. So it's not true to say and that. And all governors in uh, the Southwest <laughs> say that. <laughs> Say what you are saying to me. All the governors in the south. Can all, no, the south south. Mm -hmm. Can all the governors say that they've always won elections without manipulation, without votes being allocated and all that? Well, uh, uh, you're, you're asking me to now go into the minds of all the people there, but I can tell you that largely in the south, what happens is that the people's will always prevail. Where we see these uh, allocations happen is not really mostly in the south. It's not. Card no, reader I'm usage. Talking about southeast now. Card, uh, card reader usage doesn't work several places. All this and all that. And now that INEC has refined their procedures to such a way that they can go to the next step. Yes, this effort, and the effort is coming from the ruling party. And actually, it's ironical that the ruling party that came on a mantra of saying, let us turn things around, turns around to be even far more anachronistic than <laughs> those that they came, or they sought to change and changed, actually. Some of them are saying that the INEX server could be hacked, that um, the, the election could be rigged electronically. 
I, I think the I guess I, that's I, the I, think, I think the problem really that we have is that every uh, effort in the book is being thrown just not to make it. If INEX servers could be hacked, so CBN servers also could have been hacked. So your ATM uh, servers could have also been hacked. So your accounts could have also, I mean, there, there are so much firewalls that can be built and all that. Let, 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 let's not go there. Th these people know that it's not. And besides, besides, the elections is not just electronic. The electronic is the back, you understand, end to validate the paper, the ballot paper, the counting, and the physical one will still be there. So whenever they come with all these stories, I don't think you should, uh, we should let Nigerians listen to them. It, it, it's, it's really ironical that um, in the 21st century, where we are, where people are talking about artificial intelligence and, and then we are, we, are, we, are still, we are still dragging ourselves back. And you know the funny thing? Those who drag out, who, who continue to make this argument are the people who use the... Uh, the, the same uh, technologies that had been developed elsewhere. They travel from here, they go to Dubai and stay. They travel from here, they go to Britain and they use. They travel from here, they, they use everything. They use cell phones, they, use, they do everything, and then they turn around. Once it comes to election, ah, no, we cannot do it because our people. Right? No, they, they're just being, um, I would say, uh, half smart trying to pull Let's the wool pull the wool over Nigeria. Let's take eyes. go back to your party. Let's go back to your party. What is uh, it about my the, party? Still talking about the gale of defections on your party. There is no gale state. of defections. So let let, hmm? let let us even take so how many people have defected? Who? About three governors are gone. Now. So so let let's and see. Let's see. Let let's just take, you know how, let's take you know, them one after the other. You know how how um, good it will have been if the lead of the uh, if the majority of the APC in the National Assembly was not um, as tremendous as it is now. You know, on both sides you need to work with one another. But we have a situation in which APC has overwhelming majority and more people are still. Yeah, APC, APC actually doesn't have overwhelming majority. The, the majority you need to pass, let's say, an amendment of the Constitution is two-thirds. The majority you need to pass uh, the, uh, an, a bill just like we did in the Electoral Act is simply uh, uh, simple majority. So when you say it's overwhelming, it's not like that. It, it, it depends on what the Constitution stipulates for the different type of uh, legislation that we do. Two, when we come to the fact of defections, okay, so three, going to ask just a minute, mm. three governors have defected. Yes. Which governors? Uh, Governor Mai mm. from a boy says, I'm defecting because they don't want to make us president. You understand? Hmm? And of course, having moved to APC, nothing was heard again about making him president. No, it's still too early. It's still too early. Uh, the campaigns so, are not even uh, So, then uh, Governor Ayade eh, now says he's uh, defecting. And his reason was even more ludicrous that he was defecting because President Buhari has managed the country very well. It, 
that's the reason for the fact that because President Buhari has managed the country in his own view very well. So you could see that there was no reason for that. Then the third one, Governor Motawale of um, Zamfara saying he's defecting so that the federal government will help him in tackling banditry. In other words, telling Nigerians that the federal government was the source of the banditry in his state. No, no, no. No, no, no because that, that's no, exactly that's what not, he meant. He yeah, just so, said that there will be concerted efforts. Oh, okay, so... Not necessarily that the so, federal so, government... Yeah, yeah, so, so, so as a governor of a state, he doesn't have the uh, capability of meeting with the president, who is president of the whole of Nigeria, because he's in a different... Uh, party. In other words, also, he's also telling Nigerians that the president is divisive, that the president does not help a governor that is in another party who has a security problem, except you come. And so, justifying what we are saying, that APC government has been blackmailing governors. Now, a couple of days ago, the governors of the northeast of the PDP extraction had a meeting and also came out and said publicly that they are calling on the federal government to stop harassing them. So if APC was such a very beautiful party, such a nice thing. Harassing them so why to come and join. To come and join. Why? Why do you have to? push people? Why do you have to uh, impose it on people? But you Why know, is this governor saying, saying this No, thing? I'm just saying We have no means of verifying. Uh, well, the, the point really... The veracity of the what they're saying. The, the point really is you also have no means of verifying, of verifying whatever the APC says. That people were coming on their own free will and it is because of how good they are. That's what they say. And so, we do not care about who decides to go where. In fact, the one of uh, Governor Motawale is the most pathetic. This is a man who swore on the Quran, and it is live, and the video is viral, and said, if I ever leave, let it not be well with me. He swore on the Quran. In other words, he just forgot or he does not take that book serious or something. I've not seen oh, that. I will, I, will, I will send you the, the video. It's there. E even Governor Wiki referred to it to say, how can this man do this? I've heard that your governor to may eventually end up in the APC. Governor of Abia, in uh, receiving the members of the Board of Trustees of PDP, also said, I will never leave PDP. So, he says so. Can I trust I, anyone? I can also send you. Can I trust anyone, when including you? I don't know. Uh, 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 it means me season, going to season. APC. I, I think, really, that you, you, for some of us who have built a reputation of integrity and telling the truth, there is nothing I will gain from APC. I'm telling you, nothing I will gain. <laughs> so when they talk about going to APC, if I'm the last man, I'll be in PDP. If I'm the last man, you can lose anything. You know, I think one of the bains of our, our political development is the feeling that you must win. Yes. Uh, you, you must be in office. You, 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 you must have a position. Uh, if you don't, that you won't be able to make uh, a contribution to society. I think that that's wrong. I think that that's wrong. I, th I think you can make contributions elsewhere. I think you can, you c you can show the way. I think you can uh, say this is what it is. I, I think that even, even though our society today has degenerated to such an extent, but I think that there are still a few good people. Where are we on the PIB controversy? At the moment, hmm. 
um, at the PIB, it was suspended. The, the joint uh, conference report was suspended in the House, but has been passed in the Senate. And what was passed in the Senate at the joint conference report is 3% for host community, which is the contentious issue. So after the recess, we expect uh, yeah, yes. I, 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 as soon as we come back from the recess, I think yes. these uh, differences will now be uh, 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 tackled um, by uh, a joint conference of both houses. Maybe also, the recess will also give people time to reflect on what they have done. For example, for the Senate, for us to ask ourselves, how could we pass a bill that is against the Constitution, which we saw to uphold? And, I mean, the question of Section 78, subjecting INEC to, I mean, so I guess that those type of things will go on throughout the recess. And so when we come back, we'll probably have to look at those things again. One of your colleagues, um, talking about the defections from the PDP, said it was time for your chairman, the national chairman, to throw in the towel. Literally accusing him of uh, lack of capacity to lead, and blaming him for these defections. Well, I, I think that the, with all due respect, that person who said so is very, very wrong. You are a chairman, a governor makes his decision. When you get to know, you take members of the National Working Committee to the chairman, you get the board of trustees to go to talk to the person, you get a group of governors to go to talk to the person. At the end of all these interventions, the person still says he's going. How would you not turn around? If the chairman had ignored all these signs, then you would say, I was part of talking to these people. And I know, and if you listen to Governor Wike, he said that even the governors, PDP governors forum led by Tambuwal, that they all went on a very hazardous journey to see uh, Governor Mutawale to say, and I know that the PDP NWC went, and I know that they send the, I mean, so if you, everybody comes to you as your party member, and, and let's let even go back to the front basis. You're a member of a party. Why should you be begged to stay in the party? And, and nobody has ad, 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 well, advanced. Maybe they simply Why think, should you? Maybe they simply think that there's no future in the party. If, if you feel that there's no future in the party, then you're not the only person in the same Zamfara. The deputy governor said he's not going, that he doesn't see the reason for it. Both of them did elections. Maybe they didn't want to offend his father. How? What who, has that got to do with offending very, his father? He's, 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 an individual, he's an individual on his own. So, I, 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 when this type of story, oh, because some people are defecting, I don't see that that is an issue that you're going to hang on the National Working Committee of the party. What has happened, I think, is that some people think that they have interests for which they want to protect, or which they want to advance, or which they want to, and they say, okay, let me go here. And I bet you, and I can tell you, and for those who are defecting for free, they never get what they want when they go there. Never. We have seen it happen time without number. But and, the, and the I, governor I, of Kirby State defected from your party. I reach. was given the ticket and he became governor. Who? The governor of Kirby State currently used to be in your party. He no. defected long time. and he was given the ticket long, long time. He, and he, he became governor. He, he wasn't given the ticket because he has, it was the Kirby people deciding that he would be the person to be governor. Not because of his defection. What I'm saying in effect is that we have seen people move whatever they are sought for and you know, because I walk across the aisle, I talk to our people, my friends also in, uh, 
APC. And uh, one of them, when I told him, oh, well, our people have gone over to you now. You can now give them presidency and all that. The man just had a good laugh. And you know what he told me? He said, so after we cook soup, then you come and give another person come and lick. <laughs> but there are, there are, especially in the South South, <laughs> there were people who defected to the APC <laughs> and became ministers, you know. Um, and since politics is an interest driven game, yeah, people would. We'll always do that. Yes. Yes. And so when PDP takes over, then they defect back. Because you see, what goes around comes around. There was also a time in this country, uh, just before the second term, of um, President Basanjo when PDP had everything and everybody was running to come to PDP. You know that happened too. And it was also the same thing. And so, if this had not happened before, we would have been so worried to say, ah, maybe. But PDP still lost elections despite the vaunting bigness of it, which is what APC is copying now, they will also lose election. That is what I know as a fact. Do you honestly, uh, do you honestly think that based on the crisis that we see even in PDP, based on the fact that people are jumping ship from the PDP, they can win the next election. Do you honestly think your party can win the next election? Yes, and I'm going to tell you where, when it's going to start. It's going to start in November. This November? Yes. With, uh, when the trouble in APC erupts properly. But the yeah. problem is, you always no, no, have no, 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 crisis no, no. in your no, 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 no. Our party. Look at an Andra, our party, for example. Our party, no, we don't have any. never successfully presented a candidate for governor in Anambra without a crisis. No, what, what happened in Anambra is that everybody, everybody who runs and does everything and always tries to make sure that all their rights are protected in some way. And most of the time they go to court to protect, but at the end of the day, we will always have a candidate. And we already have a candidate now. All that is going on now is that people are litigating uh, which is their right. Well, we have a candidate. And the candidate will be the candidate that will win the election. That is what we see. Not you can't predict that the PDP will win the number of elections. Look, three, uh, uh, three senators yes. in a number, two out of them PDP. House of Rep members, I think eight or so, five out of them PDP. So you, you want to ask yourself, why would in an Abga state no Abga person won a senatorial election? The, the grassroots and the base in Anambra is PDP. That's a, that, know, that's a fact. But the governorship election uh, is always uh, a problem. Uh, when it comes to governorship, well, of course they will have all that, but not this time. I think people have realized where and where the problems are. Uh, and, and we have a candidate who, by, I would say, divine providence now, does not have political baggage. Mm. Yes. Because always those people who have political baggage, that's people who say, rather than let them go, let us mm. pull, pull them, them down. down. Mm. You know, so we think that there will be a better uh, result for the PDP this time. Finally, I want to ask you about um, IPOB and all that. Mm -hmm. You stood short for uh, Namdi Kano. Mm -hmm. At the time when the John Bill, what was going through your mind? <laughs> no, at the, at the time that he escaped, you know, because, you know, he said to himself, and even said it. Yeah, it. Uh, just the jumping bills. And, and, and even when he came to court uh, the other day, he said, I ran for my life. So there are two things about jumping bail and escaping for your life. So I think we need to always make that very, very clear. So at the time that he ran for his life, all that happened was that we said, okay, so we'll go back to court and 
make our case. And I came back to court and I went to the judge and we made a deposition mm -hmm. and said that on the basis of the legal principle of last seen, that the last people that were seen with him were the soldiers of the Nigerian army who were uh, invading his um, residence, his father's residence where he was staying. And therefore, they have the responsibility of talking about what happened. Mm -hmm. And we deposed it in court, and the matter went to court, and the judge ultimately ruled that they are revoking bail. You know, most Nigerians didn't know that the judge had actually revoked the bail mm -hmm. and uh, issued a warrant of arrest. of arrest, thereby removing us from responsibility again of providing him. Mm. Yeah, that's what happened. Not many people know this. Yeah, a lot of people don't mm. know. Yeah, so that's why when a lot of people were shouting, oh, go and bring a body, but let him produce him. I just <laughs> laughed because I knew, <laughs> I knew that uh, they were not on any strong legal uh, uh, foundation. You know. Did you at any point um, think that you could be put in this llama over his uh, no, I never, escape? I, no, no, I never... I never always, I was always sure, because I'm, my, the facts, of course, were very, very... Uh, Man, you didn't uh, feel betrayed that um, they did that to you? No, I didn't feel, I said he escaped for his life, so he couldn't have been betrayal. You know. But he didn't communicate with you and you well, knew that. Uh, well, if, if, he, if he is running for his life, you can't expect him to be communicating with me. <laughs> how would he communicate? I, I, was, I was as surprised as anybody. When uh, after that whole drama, mm -hmm. he, he surfaced in uh, Israel, and I immediately filed, wrote a letter to the Foreign Affairs Ministry, yes. asking the Nigerian the Foreign Affairs to instruct our Nigerian ambassador in. Uh, Israel to ascertain whether the person that we see in his photographs is actually this person. I never got a response from our foreign affairs uh, minister. Really because, and and, and uh, that letter that I wrote and all that, I also filed it yes. in court. Because I, I, I always following the legal and proper procedure. I never got any response. I didn't hear anything again. And of course, um, part of the ruling mm. of uh, the uh, judge in this matter, we, we had also um, uh, gone on appeal. You know, the matter is still pending. But now that you know, there's another. This, I don't. I don't think that that matter would be. If they were to. Um, Grant him bail again. Would you stand? <laughs> Would you be willing to? If the circumstances are the same, why not? My the 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 first circumstance was that the uh, judge said that they need hmm. a senator, okay. you know, to uh, be part of his. Uh, shorties mm. and, and, and so if a judge turns out again and says this is also the this thing I don't see why I'm a senator of the Federal Republic I come from the Southeast I'm the chairman uh, I'm the minority leader at that time I was chairman of the Southeast caucus right now the chairman of the Southeast caucus is in Kekure Madrid so maybe if such a, a situation uh, as chairman he would not it to him <laughs> but I, I don't think that uh, we will run away from our responsibility he's our son mm, and he's, he's from our state. state so our son is from our state and um, we think also that despite everything there are fundamentals that we must deal with and those fundamentals is what we need to actually focus on yes. and that fundamental is what is it 
about this particular government that is leading to this type of alienation from component parts because it's not just Namdekan, Ibo is also there somewhere insisting that they, uh, they should also go their way. It's not just him. Mm. Uh, so, and, and uh, we, what we thought really was that um, the first things first, you don't deal with the symptom, you try to deal with what is it that has led to these symptoms? Uh, we think that the symptoms are the cries for, mm. you know, that, and, and the basis of it is what uh, my Thomas Sule and uh, a few uh, northern leaders of thought when they went to meet with uh, President Buhari after his election in 2015, and they said to him, justice is the basis for whatever everybody will do. If you do justice to all, then you will have no problem. And we think that that is the problem. Justice. Thank you so much, uh, my senator. It's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. I prefer this. I told you before the interview, Eina Abaribe, a master, <laughs> good talker anytime. Somebody that will always give you all the sound bites. Now it has taken, it has taken the battle to the courts of the uh, people's, the, uh, the All Progressive Congress. So we need to come out to tell us why they actually voted against the use of electronic voting and um, why the and PDP. Voting is, we have we have a number of um, articulate. Yes. Um, senators from the APC. Yes. Who voted against um, so the electronic transmission of results? Yes. People like Sane Musa Muhammad. Yes. Is mm -hmm. a fantastic. Uh, Thank you, fellow. My dad is. You know? Yes. Mm. He's the architect of mm. the card reader that mm. we now use today. Mm. Brought it to Nigeria. Mm. We have Senator mm. Jibola Bashir. Bashir. Ocean Central. Senator Central. Senator Spokesman. We are throwing the challenge to you. And Sabi Abdullah, Abdullah the yes. author of. Uh, yes. A last minute um, uh, clause hmm. on the day. So, almost be, all the Southwest senators voted. will be coming, let's even them. limit it to, to the, 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 few, the few people yeah. that we know are knowledgeable mm. about these matters. Mm. Who will be coming to your door mm. so that you can respond appropriately to what Senator Ayan Ayinaya Abari has said. Let okay. Nigerians know why you took that decision. Yeah. So, I will be ringing any of you any time from now to give you the same, talent to you. The same <laughs> audience that okay. Abari Bay got. All right. Thank you, Jude, for that lovely one. And that's our offering today. Join us tomorrow for another episode of the program. And don't forget, Journalist Hangout Special on Sunday, 1.30 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. for Journalist Hangout on Sunday. You are also on YouTube, youtube.com slash TVC News Nigeria. I'm Ayodilo Zubakon. See you tomorrow and God bless Nigeria.